Hi, I'm Connie McDougal with City Lights Communications and Public Affairs. I'm also the editor of your employee newsletter, Network. Welcome to this edition of Netline. In this program, we'll journey to the Tolt River where City Light is working with Seattle Public Utilities and state, federal, and tribal representatives to help restore wild Chinook habitat using this large Chinook helicopter. And we'll review how City Light recently achieved greenhouse gas neutrality, the first utility in the nation to reach that goal. But first I want to show you some slides from my recent trip. No, relax, these aren't my vacation photos. This was actually serious work. I recently returned from the Gulf Coast of Mississippi, which as you know was ravaged by Hurricane Katrina. I wanted to share with you some of the lessons I think we can all learn for future disasters that may happen right here in the Seattle region. The City of Seattle sent me along with other city workers to help some of the local governments that were absolutely overwhelmed by this disaster. I'm sure you've seen the pictures of devastation on TV, but seeing it in person was unbelievable. This picture shows me working with uh, the local fire department in Fontainebleau, Mississippi, and it was a real problem. They went down from a 26-person fire department down to seven that could show up for work. And this underscores the point that uh, whoever you are, utility workers or fire department people, you have to report to work when there's a disaster. And you have to have your families prepared uh, you can't be around to take care of them because you'll be working. And all of these men um, had to face those kinds of issues. Here are a series of pictures of the devastated utility lines. Um, here's one leaning on the beach. It's not much left, but uh, it, it's still standing. This picture shows a new use for utility lines in Mississippi, which is uh, basically a hanging line of garbage. Transformers just littered the scenery, here's one I found on the ground. Electric utilities, of course, took a major, major hit from the hurricane in the water. The statistics really are pretty astonishing. There are three companies, essentially, that provide power in the Mississippi coast area. Mississippi Power has uh, 195,000 customers, and they lost power to every single one of those customers. They had 65% of their transmission and distribution facilities completely destroyed or damaged. The 1,000 miles of line came down, and they lost 9,000 poles as well as 300 transmission towers. So you just can imagine the devastation. Uh, another company, Coast Electric Power Association, with 70,000 customers uh, suffered a lot, and Singing River Electric Power Association has more than 62,000 customers. All of these uh, had just tremendous damage. Uh, and yet, despite this devastation, uh, and thanks to the help of utility crews coming in from all across the country, they were able to get power back, in some cases, within 12 days and no longer than three weeks. This is all temporary, of course. Uh, they just sort of patched it together. They say it will take well over a year before they have their systems back to normal. One of the things that will certainly happen in Seattle if there's a massive earthquake is the loss of bridges. We depend heavily on bridges, and they do on the Gulf Coast as well. This picture shows the um, bridge between Pass Christiane and Bay St. Louis, the only thing that was left were the supports. These pictures show the bridge that connects Biloxi with Ocean Springs, Mississippi, and as you can see, it was uh, devastated. It's just blocks of upturned cement. And then just the pictures of, of